this man is a paraplegic computer engineer confined to a wheelchair. When he receives a foreclosure letter from the bank, an unexpected discovery happens. He stumbles upon a hole in his basement that leads directly to a bank vault. Today we're diving into the 2016 crime thriller movie titled, At the End of the Tunnel. But before we jump into the details, make sure to show us some love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now, let's get right into it. Joaquin, a computer engineer confined to a wheelchair, resides in solitude with his frail aged dog Casimiro. He has a pitiable existence and spends most of his days fiddling with computers in the basement of his large, disheveled house. Joaquin's life hasn't always been this way. He had brighter days. Tragically, he lost his beautiful wife and daughter in an accident, resulting in his paralysis from the waist down. This heartbreaking event left him in deep distress, leading him to adopt a reclusive lifestyle and find solace in smoking. Joaquin's dog Casimiro is ailing, and he yearns to relieve his suffering. After consulting the vet for Casimiro's test results, he receives the grim news that there's no remedy for the dog's condition. Faced with a difficult decision, he turns to the internet in search of a humane method to relieve Casimiro's pain. Taking matters into his own hands, he administers an euthanizer to some biscuits, stashes them in a jar, and puts the jar away until he's ready. Facing the looming threat of foreclosure on his house by the bank, Joaquin is compelled to make a difficult choice. Opting to secure his residence, he put out a rent ad. Soon, Berta, accompanied by her silent six-year-old daughter Betty, expresses interest in the available space. Despite Joaquin's initial reluctance, Berta's assertiveness and persuasive behavior sway him, leading him to agree to rent the room to her. As soon as Berta and her daughter move in, she starts to tidy up the house and acquaint herself with Joaquin. But Joaquin isn't having it. Berta isn't phased by Joaquin's unwelcoming attitude towards her, as she keeps being friendly to him. She tells him unprovoked that she is a professionally trained dancer who came to the city to dance but ended up as a pole dancer. Later that night, Berta throws Joaquin a birthday party. They chat over a few glasses of wine and she dances for him, all to drag him out of his melancholic mood into a light mood. A few moments later, Joaquin catches a glimpse of Betty cuddling up to Casimiro, reminding him of his late daughter which throws him into a whirlwind of memories and emotions. That same night, Joaquin is in his basement as he spends almost all of his time working on computers, and he hears a thudding sound from the wall. Out of curiosity, he uses a stethoscope on the wall to hear it, and he realizes there's a group of men in the tunnel. This men seems like they are paying attention to every move and sound that Joaquin is making. Now to enhance his understanding, he connects the stethoscope to his computer. While still in the basement, Berta excitedly informs Joaquin that Casimiro attempted to stand, urging him to join in celebrating the dog's small triumph. Later, after dinner, Joaquin went back to the basement and discreetly installed a camera through the wall, connected to his computer to monitor the men's activities. Upon discovering the unknown men caving, he fears they're in danger and urges Berta to leave, unintentionally leading to a misunderstanding about his motives. Berta appeals to Joaquin, expressing the challenges of finding a new place and the lack of alternatives. After thoughtful consideration, Joaquin decides to let her stay. Back in the basement, Joaquin meticulously notes the names and corresponding faces of the men while watching them. He is shocked when he sees Berta in the tunnel talking to the gang leader Galareto. The realization that she is dating him, and that her room rental isn't coincidental, dawns on him. He soon discovers that they're caving the tunnel to rob a nearby bank, which piques his curiosity. Despite his discovery, Joaquin chooses to keep it to himself and play along. Later, as Berta heads to the grocery shop, Joaquin attempts to engage with Betty, but she grumpily ignores him. To his amazement, he catches her whispering to the dog moments later. This prompted Joaquin to plant a microphone on Casimiro's collar, which Betty put around his neck. One day, while observing the robbers, Joaquin discovers their plan to transport stolen money through the tunnel using a trolley that will conveniently pass beneath his basement. He devises a plan to open his basement floor to enable him to lean in and steal some cash as the trolley passes by. Soon after, an argument breaks out among the robbers. Muneko has been texting from the tunnel against their rule and inadvertently revealing their location. This infuriates Galareto, who suspects him to be a mole. Muniko is tortured and killed, despite pleading that he was only communicating with a girl he just met. After they kill Muneko, Galareto's brother Canario inquires how they'll get rid of the body, and Galareto tells him that Gutman, the cop who's their informant, will take care of it. After that, Joaquin thinks of a plan. During a seemingly pleasant moment with Berta over glasses of wine, Unbeknownst to Berta, Joaquin spiked her drink. When the effects begin to kick in, he pretends to be oblivious to what's happening to her. Guiding her to his room, he reveals his awareness of what's going on before sedating her, after which he confiscates her phone. Afterward, Joaquin resumes watch on the robbers, and a new person arrives with the explosives intended for the bank heist, a woman named Renee. Returning to Berta, who's now awake, Joaquin massages her limbs to relieve her numbness and curiously asks her when did Betty stop talking. Berta reveals that Betty stopped talking at the age of four, Joaquin, not holding back, questions why she's involved with someone like Galareto. 
stating that he's a jerk. In Galareto's defense, Berta insists he's a good guy who wouldn't harm anyone. Joaquin, triggered by her response and her ignorance of Galareto's true nature, grabs his computer. He shows her a video of her so-called good boyfriend torturing and killing Muneco, which leaves her visibly disturbed. While Berta watches the video, Joaquin and Betty eat breakfast in the kitchen with Casimiro. Joaquin informs Betty that her mother isn't feeling well and encourages her to go see her whenever she wishes. Despite Betty's apparent indifference, he offers her a separate room attempting to foster a connection. Though met with resistance when he tries to touch her, Joaquin calmly reassures her that he'll never hurt her. He then takes her to his late daughter's room, inviting her to stay there with Casimiro and play with any toys she fancies. Returning to the room, Joaquin shares his intention with Berta, revealing his plan to steal money from her boyfriend and his gang. She strongly discourages him, warning of the dire consequences. Berta suggests selling his house instead if he needs money, but Joaquin is determined. Despite her concerns, he insists on proceeding. She cautions him on how to carefully respond to Galareto's texts, providing tips to avoid suspicion. After subtly sedating Berta, Joaquin returns to the basement to observe the gang's activities. He learns they've mistakenly dug the tunnel in the wrong direction, exposing a water pipe. They fear it might burst open when they detonate the explosive to blow open the bank. It's too late to continue caving, as it will ruin their perfect plan. They plan to detonate the explosive on Christmas Day when the city will be busy, to mask the sound of the explosive and avoid drawing attention. Later, Joaquin goes down to the tunnel to measure the water pipe and almost runs into Galareto and Canario, who also came down the tunnel after him to measure the pipe. However, following Canario's suggestion, they decide to use something bigger and more grasping to push the money through the tunnel, opting for a cat carrier instead of a trolley as previously agreed, disrupting Joaquin's plan. Forced to adapt, Joaquin decides to steal some money from the bank himself and sabotage their plans. Moments later, Joaquin dozes off in the room while watching Berta, only to wake up and realize Betty is missing. Anxious, he searches for her. He suspects she might have gone down the basement when he finds Casimiro by the entrance. Upon reaching there, he sees Betty on camera snooping in the other basement and calls out to her. But it is already late as the robbers return to the tunnel, prompting Betty to hide. The men are soon joined by Gutman, the cop working with them. After they fill him in on their plans, he hands Galaretto a list of safes to avoid, as they belong to dangerous drug dealers. In exchange for abating their robbery, Gutman instructs Galaretto to retrieve some documents from a specific safe that he claims someone is using to blackmail him. Before he leaves, Gutman assures them there won't be any patrol teams around the neighborhood at the time of their operation. As they wrap up their preparations, Lefty appears to be searching for something. When questioned about his pacing, he explains that he's looking for his watch, convinced he left it in the basement but can't locate it. After they leave, Betty rushes back to the basement. Joaquin opens the hole and helps her up, realizing she has Lefty's watch. Afterward, Galaredo calls Berta instead of texting, causing Joaquin to rush back to the room to give the phone to Berta, pleading with her to pick up the call and play along, but she refuses to cooperate. In an attempt to make her cooperate, Joaquin reveals to Berta that her daughter Betty can speak, and he witnessed Betty whispering to the dog, prompting him to place a recorder on Casimiro's collar. To prove it, he plays a recording of her conversation with the dog. From the conversation, Berta learns that Galaredo has been molesting her daughter, which explains the reason behind her muteness. This revelation leaves Berta shattered. She is bitter and angry at Galaredo and swears to kill him. Joaquin pacifies her and assures her to trust him that he is going to ruin their plans. She finally cooperates and calls Galaredo, assuring him everything is going well on her end, and that Joaquin rarely goes down to the basement since she arrived. Still scared that Berta may screw up his plans, especially now that she knows what Galaredo has been doing to her daughter, he sedates her again. Afterward, while Joaquin and Betty silently watch the fireworks together on Christmas Eve, the robbers plant the explosive near the bank's vault, away from the water pipe. Having confirmed that all is intact, they take a break to return later, by 8 a.m. for the heist. Joaquin seizes the opportunity to carry out his own heist. After locking Betty in her room and protecting his arms, he quickly goes down the tunnel. Joaquin relocates the explosive to the water pipe and breaks open the original placement, which takes him into the bank. He defies Gutman's warning and picks the specific safes he cautioned Galaredo and his gang not to touch. He stuffs the money in his backpack and swiftly exits the bank. As Joaquin heads back, he hears the robbers' voices and tries to hide. But he learns that they are about to clear the air in the tunnel and detonate the explosive, prompting him to hurry back to the bank. Crawling up just in time, the explosive detonates. He swiftly returns to his basement before the robbers descend the tunnel and narrowly escape being caught. Following that, Rene Peachy and Schwarzenegger goes to the tunnel. Confused why there's already a hole which Joaquin dug at the bank, they think the explosion created it so they disregard their question and move on. They follow Gutman's instructions, picking and emptying the specified safes. Amidst their heist, they hear a trickling sound below, and Renee goes to check it out. She sees water in the tunnel and informs the others. She then goes further to check out the source, 
and discovers the pipe has burst and the tunnel is already flooded. Galeredo, Canario, and Lefty quickly grab the money available and exited the tunnel, abandoning the rest of their gang. Peachy and Schwarzenegger, ignorant of the gravity of the situation, are still picking the safes, and at that moment, they notice that the safe Gutman warned them to avoid is mysteriously open. Afterward, they pack up the money and head for the tunnel, but they realize the tunnel is full already, so they return to the bank. The bank soon becomes flooded, leaving them no choice but to sound the alarm. Meanwhile, Renee tries to make it to the other side, but is stuck in the flooded tunnel. Hearing her struggles, Joaquin, who has been in the basement all along, opens the hole and offers her a hand, but she tries dragging him into the tunnel, screaming and alerting the others of his presence. So Joaquin closes the hole and lets her drown. With Joaquin's basement submerged, he scatters computers across the floor, concealing the hole. Returning to the room after his successful heist, Joaquin places the backpack in the wardrobe. Approaching Berta, he is surprised to find her asleep, as he expected the sedative's effects to have worn off. Climbing onto the bed, he nudges her and calls out, but suddenly, Berta awakens striking him on the head with an object and knocking him over. Pinning him to the bed, Berta pleads to be released so she can take care of her daughter. Joaquin reassures her that he can take care of both of them, but she insists she must leave. Attempting to use the sedative on him, Joaquin knocks her out before she has a chance, and then sedates her, after which he showers to erase any traces. As soon as the police and federal firefighters arrive due to the flood, Joaquin wheels himself outside to report the flooding in his basement. An officer instructs him to return inside, assuring him the water will be extracted. Back inside, Joaquin observes Galareto frustratedly talking on the phone with Gutman. Moments later, Gutman and his team arrive at Joaquin's house for questioning and searching. While they are there, Joaquin puts up an act, having them think Berta and Betty are his wife and daughter, and they are both sleeping. After checking out the main house, Joaquin takes them to the flooded basement. As they prepare to leave, Gutman, who's been eyeing Joaquin suspiciously, takes his phone and inputs his number urging him to call if he finds anything. Shortly after their departure, Galareto, Canario, and Lefty show up at Joaquin's house, pretending to be the police. Playing along, Joaquin lets them in and immediately sends a message to Gutman. Galareto interrogates him, asking about others in the house. Joaquin mentions that a woman and her daughter used to live there, but not anymore. Unaware that Betty is standing behind him, blowing his story, which makes Galareto hint something is wrong. Later, Galareto discover Berta is drugged and tied up. Galareto questions Joaquin about the situation, to which he feigns ignorance, claiming he doesn't understand what's happening and denying any involvement in tying her up. Despite torture and threats, he maintains his stance that he's unaware of what's happening. He then discovers Berta's phone ringing and answers it, hearing Gutman telling him he's outside the house. This makes him more agitated and suspicious. Wondering why Gutman is present, Galeredo directs Lefty and Canario to tie him up. As Gutman lies there, he witnesses the unfolding drama. Joaquin, sensing Galeredo's growing impatience and potential danger, decides to play on their mind and create confusion. Pleading for his life, he strategically mentions Lefty's name, urging him to not let them harm him. Shocked by how Joaquin knows Lefty's name, Galeredo questions Lefty. Who appears equally surprised, to add more pressure, Joaquin lies to Galeredo that Lefty used to visit Berta and might be responsible for sedating and tying her up. Joaquin further explains that Berta and Lefty told him about the robbery, and together, they plan to loot and split the money. However, Joaquin claims Lefty altered the plan by using a cat carrier instead of the agreed-upon trolley. Lefty is dumbfounded at the turn of events, and Joaquin further cements his lies by showing Lefty's watch, implying it was left during one of his visits. As tensions rise, Lefty senses that Galeredo and Canario are buying Joaquin's fabricated story, and being certain they'll kill him without hesitation, he decides to act first. He shoots Canario, attempting to do the same to Galeredo, who manages to kill him first. Amid Galeredo's mourning of his brother Canario, Berta steps out of the room and without flinching kills Galeredo with Lefty's gun, as revenge for what he did to her daughter. She then proceeds to comfort her daughter, who is visibly petrified by the intense drama unfolding before her eyes. Gutman witnessing everything offers his help. He suggests placing Galareto and Canario's corpses in his car trunk, and advises them to use oxygenated water to clean the floor. However, he demands that Joaquin hand over the money he took from the safe, threatening to ruin his life. Unfazed, Joaquin reveals a video of his conversation with Galareto and his gang letting him know his life is already ruined. With a silly smile, Gutman casually helps himself to biscuits from the jar, stuffing some more into his pockets, then points a gun at Berta and her daughter, coercing Joaquin to surrender the money, leaving Joaquin no choice but to hand over the money to him. When Gutman gleefully drives away with the money, triumph evident on his face and munching on the biscuits, unaware that they have been injected with euthanizer. As it takes effect, he crashes into a moving vehicle. He staggers out as his vehicle catches fire, and then succumbs to the poisonous substance. The following day, Joaquin, Berta, and Betty leave the house. 
As they are about to leave, Betty holds Joaquin's hand indicating that the little girl has finally moved on and is ready to start a brand new life with her new father. If you'd like to see us recap any other movies or topics you have in mind, just drop a comment and let us know. And don't forget to hit the like button, share this recap, and subscribe to stay updated for the next one. Until next time.